What's up, y'all? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this don't work without you guys. It has been a long mother humping day. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's been long, but I'm happy that I actually had a day. Because I could be pushing up daisies. The um, previously announced all the players that we, uh, Brent Urban and all of those guys, are now officially signed onto the roster. So that's done. And um, I'm here working on something special, a new style, oversized rack. And a person who said, you know what, I love the big racks that you have with all the football helmets on them and the hats. And I said, yeah, the problem with that is, is they're like six feet long and um, I can't ship them that way. So we can't, we can't ch cheaply ship them. Yeah. And so what I did was I did something different. Made them so that way there's four. So they're cut in half, so that way they're shippable. So what you can do is you can have, you, you, this is convertible. This is where, this is the genius of this, okay? You can have it like this, you can put a hat on top of it, and you can hang a helmet underneath of it. Or you can put it this way, and you can put something else on there and display it. So it's an oversized lace that the glue needs to set up and dry. So I've got to get all of these together and get them painted. Okay, so, interesting thing. Some cowboy fans, which we have are the most cynical fans in the world. Cynical. No matter what happens, they're gonna be bitching. I, I, I hate to say that about my own people, but that's the way we are, you know? You bring a guy in, oh, he was injured. Oh, he was on the, you know, that Super Bowl team that, that, that got the ass kicked, oh, Let's trade this guy because he's a bum. You know, I mean, literally, it don't matter what you do. They ain't going to be yeah, happy. Yeah, one of those guys was a bum. Which one? That we hired? Oh, no, that, um, that's still on the team. Okay, but, you know, that was just one year. It might be he turns and, around. And you know who I'm talking about, too, Mr. Jalen Smith. The but he might turn. Okay. most play, about, handle I'm, player for his position. You see what I'm talking about? Okay. You, you, you see, you, you hear him, right? So, I got rid of my manager too, and my defense got better. Oh, here we go. Now, my team sucked because we didn't have DeMarcus Lawrence. And he had to help the, he had to we, help Tennessee. He had to help Tennessee go to the Super Bowl in Madden. That was a mistake to get rid of him. But Jalen Smith, yeah, I got rid of him. And so far, he's played game. All right. I hear what you're saying. But also, too, I won the Super Bowl. No, then the following year, I won the Super Bowl with. With, with my boy. Okay. <laughs> Be that as it may, I'm old school where you actually have to play the football games to win them, okay? Well, you actually play football. I, I attempted. Well, I there, there's, a, there's a difference. Well, like apparently, that. you a Super Bowl champion. He, he a Super Bowl champion on Madden, okay? Well, that's what that's what the Eagles, that's what the Eagle fans, used to see. That's, that's the joke on the Eagle fans. The only way to get a Super Bowl is if they play on Madden. Play on Madden. Okay, well, they, they finally they found that one. one. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think anyway. after you gave Joe Blue's cousin the ring. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, in sending Philly 500 some shit. Yeah, but you gave him the ring, and, and he was holding it the whole time we were at the Super Bowl that year. Yeah, well, <laughs> I won't make that mistake again. Be that as it may. Yeah, don't give him the trophy. One of the things, because I'm old school, i.e., that means I'm old, okay? One of the things that made the Dallas Cowboys back in the day great. This has got so much sawdust on it. Hold on. What made the Dallas Cowboys great back in the day was they were innovators. Okay? They came up with new 
things. Okay? Tom Landry. The shift. The offensive linemen, they come up to the line of scrimmage, put their hands on their knees, they stand up, and they would shift. But see, but most people thought, but they didn't realize what they were actually doing was they would shift to the left a couple inches or shift to the right a couple inches. They'd all come out and line up the same. And if the ball was coming in your hole, you were shifting out just a little bit to create a little bit more space. It was actually a useful thing. But it was also getting in rhythm, too, because, boom, it shifted. You know, it, it was new. They came out with the shotgun, which, of course, is used all the time now. Okay? The shotgun. Roger Staubach and the shotgun. They had the flex defense where they took, they took, a lot of people don't know this, but Randy White was a linebacker. He was a terrible linebacker and for the Cowboys that first year. In fact, he was so bad. This is how crazy it is. He was so bad that he almost got cut. And another interesting part on this, too, another player who they kind of changed positions with that was close to being cut was Charlie Waters. Charlie Waters was a safe, excuse me, a cornerback, and he was getting burnt. Charlie Waters literally thought he was going to be cut by the Cowboys because in a game, they just beat, they beat him. They beat him like a redheaded stepchild. I mean, let's be honest. He, he looked like anything but a cornerback. And it was just like, dude is just sorry. And had he been playing today, you know, you guys would have killed him and just said, man, he's a bum, get rid of him, and all that. But Tom Landry, the innovator, looked at him and actually did a speech with the team. And he said, if I had a defense with 11 guys that played as hard as Charlie Waters, we'd never lose. And people are like, what the fuck is he talking about? What are they talking about? He was ass. But it was his never give up attitude, being tenacious, and being a dog. He didn't have the skills, or excuse me, the speed. He didn't have the speed to keep up with the wide receivers. But Tom Landry realized, I failed you. You didn't fail us. I failed you because I did not put you in a position to succeed. See, you're better off being that safety, reading and reacting, than trying to cover a guy. And he changed positions for him. And that innovation led to the Cowboys getting getting to four and winning two uh, two hold up I'll show you show you give me an idea it wasn't this one but it looked kind of like this one hold up winning <laughs> going to four of them and winning two trophies that looked like this. That's right. This, by the way, guys, is the Joe Barty. The very first Joe Barty trophy. We're giving this away tonight, by the way. Tonight, because we've had so many fans since Saturday that have super chatted. We're giving this away to everybody who super chatted on um, my live stream earlier today. Saturday as well as tonight. That's the only people that are entered. Well, that and the new channel members. We got a lot of new channel members. So those are also going to be into the drawing. So, boom. The very first one of these. The very, uh, the dogs, somebody let the dogs out out there. It's going away. So it was innovation that helped the Dallas Cowboys get. Those Super Bowls, they were ahead of the game of everybody else. And this was one of my pet peeves about Jason Garrett. Because at the time that Jason Garrett was here, what innovations do you ever remember from the Dallas Cowboys? He didn't come up with anything new. It was basically rehashing what the Cowboys used to do. 
You understand what I'm saying? There was nothing new about what Jason Garrett did. There wasn't. And you know what my philosophy and stuff is. You can never be satisfied with what you're doing. You know, I got my racks over here. They're great. People love them. But you got to come up with something new and be on the cutting edge. So here's what I love that we're hearing about with the Dallas Cowboys. And I'm hoping that this will have that same kind of effect. Boom. Innovation. You must have innovation. So we've got Keanu O'Neill, who's played safety. He's a safety. But the Cowboys are talking about, in certain situations, he's also going to be a linebacker. It's funny because I hear Eagle fans and stuff, or, or even some of the cynical Cowboy fans that are saying, we sign a safety to be a linebacker? What kind of nonsense is this? Same old stupid-ass Cowboys. But see, I'm actually on the other side of this. I actually think that this might be an innovation that may be the new change. We've seen guys like how Lawrence Taylor changed the outside linebacker position. We saw how guys like Jason Witten helped change the tight end position. I remember Joe Gibbs, who was from Air Coriel, lighting the ball up. We don't give a rat's ass about running the football. He becomes the head coach of the Washington football team, and he realizes I don't have the horses like I had in San Diego to be able to just throw the ball. He started out 0-5, and, and he changed what he did, and he came out with a one-back offense with John Riggins. He had a big-ass offensive line, and he took the fullback, and he evolved the position. He came up with the H-back which was a hybrid between tight end and fullback. Innovation, something different, something to go with the times because he could have the tight end, instead of just being a blocking back, or excuse me, the H back, he could block from a different location. He was shifted over. He could be a lead blocker. He could also catch the football. Innovation. It got them three Super Bowls. So now, enter today's Dallas Cowboys. Football has evolved. It's changed. It's like Madden. We've got three fantastic, possibly three 1,000-yard wide receivers. C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup, even though you guys want to keep trading them. And Amari Cooper. Add to that, we got tight ends that can catch the ball and go downfield. The problem is, you've got too many people to cover. And a linebacker, traditional linebacker, is not real good at covering. Enter innovation for the Cowboys. We're going to take a safety, and we're going to have him with a dual role. Because a cornerback can cover people better than a linebacker typically can. Linebacker is better at run support, you know, scraping, getting in line of scrimmage. You've seen Jalen Smith just getting beat like he stole something in pass coverage. This is where you take a safety, a guy who's used to having to cover people, a guy who's used to understanding where people are going to be, and you put him in coverage. He's a linebacker, but he's really not. He's a safety. He is a guy who, if the play calls for it, you need run support. I'm big enough and tough enough that I can do that. We got five wideouts. 
it's okay. I'm not too big and slow that I can't cover. You follow what I'm saying? It's kind of a hybrid. It's the H-back, which was not really a tight end and not really, not really a fullback. He can do double duty. Now, I don't know if this will work. I don't. I, I mean, honestly, I don't. Cowboys don't honestly know if it'll work. But you're evolving with the times. You're trying something a little bit different to try and get a different result. I like the concept because you don't want to be the one who is following what everybody else is doing. You want to be the guy that's leading. You want to be the guy that they are, that everybody else is looking at you and saying, what, what's he doing new now? What's he doing? You want to be, you don't want to be that guy. You want to be the guy that they're checking out and trying to figure out what you doing new. Because then, when they're trying to figure out what you're doing now, you're already on to the next thing. They're still a step behind. Always be the innovator. Be the leader. Not the follower. So, that's all I got for you guys right now. Kind of a slow day and I'm okay with that because whew, I gotta get all of these glued up. Two, four, six, I need at least two more of these glued up. Um I gotta go do a proposal for renovating the house and work on a kitchen um design and cook some steak on the grill. And then I've got our live stream tonight. So I hope you guys tune in. We are only three hours, damn, three hours is all I got? Three hours away to our live stream. And we'll be giving away the Joe Barty Trophy. All right, y'all. I'll see you later. <coughs> Tell you what's crazy, y'all. The amount of pieces, I've cut all these out um, in the last hour and a half, about two hours. Got all of these made up. Mike's working on getting stuff packaged up to ship out. Oh, I got to order some boxes for the Joe Barney trophies too. Dallas Cal, uh, he, uh, one other thing too. I've got to make two more of those. That's the first one. That will forever be the first one. That one will go to a winner tonight. Christian, I can't remember his last name, Ferris, Farrell, something like that. He did a $100 super chat. So a new rule. Anybody who does a $100 super chat, because I, I, bro, I'm like, I, I, I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Anybody who ends up doing a hundred dollar super chat, helping to support the channel, because you know I'm always trying to upgrade and do more things. Still got some more stuff to get for the studio outside, and I'm actually working on trying to get a CNC machine to really take this stuff to another level. So we can personalize it. If you end up doing a hundred dollar super chat, you will automatically get a Joe Barty trophy as a thank you. It's the least I can do. Whew. And I have Howard Howard Floyd and Christian Ferris did just that. And so I'm in the process, and over here, we can see, got all the parts here for about 10 of these. Look at that. Doesn't, isn't that cool? 
Looks like a football. Hey, go on. Okay. Anyway, those guys will get the second and the third ones made. I will see you guys later. Peace.